Hey there, it's Lila Gardunia, and it is week two of the Hello Geese Quilt Along. And last week, we got all of our fabric cut and labeled, all our, ver all our fun geese colors, and now we're ready to start sewing. So, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the two different construction methods. First, we'll start with the stitch and flip method that's used in the scrappy geese option. And then we'll cover the, um, the no waste four in one method that's used with the ombre option. So the first step for both options is to, well, before I get started on that, um, I just wanted to say, depending on which size quilt you make, you're going to make different blocks this week. If you're making the crib size quilt, you're only making the um, four and a half by eight and a half inch flying geese. If you're making either one of the throws, you're making the five and a half by 10 and a half inch geese and the four and a half by eight and a half. It's kind of a lot, I know, for one week. But I figured this was maybe the best way to split it up. I figure we're all like, excited right now and we can take that energy and excitement and just really crank it out this week and then kind of take it easy for the rest of the quilt along. Um, honestly, by the end of this week, you'll have like almost half the quilt done. So it's just the smaller pieces are just gonna take longer because they're smaller. Um, but with these big geese, we get a lot of bang for our buck right at the first front. So. Um, look at the pattern, look at what option you've decided to do, both size and technique, and cut the fabric accordingly and follow along. If you need to fast forward through the video to get to your technique, feel free to do that. Um, I don't know how to edit videos, so we're doing this in all one take, so hopefully it works. I need to learn to edit, but maybe, you know, in a few Next month, maybe I'll learn how to do that, um, but not tomorrow. So first step in all of them is in both methods, both the stitch and flip and the um, no waste method is to mark the back of your, um, of your background squares that you use to make the flying geese. So I'll walk you through how to do that. Um, let me flip down here. Flip. Okie dokie. All right. So, got my background square, and I need to mark a line on the back side from corner to corner. So, I just use that's my kids upstairs. I just use a pen and my um, ruler. And what you're gonna want to do, let me move this a little bit, is instead of having the ruler go exactly from right on the corner to right on the corner, you're gonna want it to be a little offset, offset a little bit to the side because your pen is going to, there needs to be room for the pen line to actually be going from corner to corner. You can use any kind of marking pen you want with a thin tip. You could use one specifically for quilting. I, this is just a regular old pen, it's fine. Um, it's gonna be in the seam, no one's gonna see it. It's not going to bleed. And I just go and mark it. Just Long. I like to start in the center and go out. Um, if I start at the tip, it tends to drag, drag it a little bit. So center and out tends to work best for me. And then just repeat on all of your squares. This might be a good time to just, this isn't my most favorite time, part of the process. So just maybe bang them all out. Mark the back of all of the squares for all the flying geese. Um, not the ones, if you're going to do the foundation paper piecing option for the, um, smallest geese, you don't need to mark those. So don't worry about that if you're planning on doing the foundation paper piece option. And I will walk you 
all through that um, in two weeks when we hit the smallest um, block week. So no worries about that. I'll walk you through both options. But um, so you can go ahead and mark your stuff and then it's time to sew. So we're gonna do the stitch and flip method first. I've got my rectangle of the appropriate size and my marked squares. I need two squares and a rectangle for each of my flying geese. So, this is not twisting how I, there we go. All right, so what you wanna do is on each of your flying geese, I like to batch this and just do all of my pinning all at once. So I take each of my flying geese, these are my four and a half by eight and a half inch geese, and I pin a square on it, and my diagonal line needs to go from corner to the middle. So just do that, repeat it for all of your flying geese. And then we take it over to the sewing machine here and we're going to sew right on the line, directly on the line. The next, um, the next, looks like I need the right foot. And I'm just using a regular presser foot for this and I'll be sewing on the line. So I, okay, also, you can technically start from either side. You just need to sew on the line as I've said before. But if I start on this corner, my machine tends to eat the fabric and it gets down in the uh, feed dogs. So depending on your machine, I like to start here where it's midway along the triangle and sew from this side to the corner and then my machine doesn't eat it. So so then go right ahead here and sew this. Sorry, I don't have a close up on it, but I'm just sewing right on the line. Take out my pin, keep going, and sew. So I've got this sewn on the line, and now I need to we're gonna trim off this excess fabric. So actually what, I feel like I'm not talking to you guys. Okay, what I would do if I was doing a whole bunch of this, I'm using the ombre method and I don't wanna bore you in this video, so I'm not gonna do all of them, but I would pin all my geese and then I'd sew them, I'd chain piece them and just sew all of these sides together all at once. That's gonna be the best use of your time instead of like pinning, sewing, trimming, pinning, sewing, trimming, going back and forth, that's gonna eat up a lot of time. If you wanna do it that way, you can do it that way, but it's just gonna take longer. So after I'm done sewing all of these, then I take my fabric and we need to trim off this corner, the corner that's away from this middle part. We need to trim that off a quarter inch from the seam line. You can use your rotary cutter and ruler and just put the ruler quarter inch line on the line and just rotary cut it off. I prefer to just take my scissors and trim it off. It's not perfect. Definitely air on the side of a little bit larger than a quarter inch. You know, it's a little jaggedy, but it's fine. So trim it. You can save these, um, especially the big ones, and just sew, like when you're done sewing, when you're done trimming them all, just sew them immediately and make some more little half square triangles. And you could trim those to, I don't know, two inches, two and a half inches, and make a little throw pillow to match your quilt. Cute, fun. Okay, dokie. So we're saving those. We are also now before we, we need to sew on the other side, but we need to press first. So I'm moving my little pressing mat over here. And this, um, 
this is a wool mat and it's kind of nice for things like this because you can just put it by your sewing machine. And um, before we get going, I just wanted to say like we're doing this and I wanted it to be motivating for you. So I put our biggest sponsor and prize on this week and it's um, Sewing by Sarah. She's an online store. She sells patterns. She sells notions. She sells, this is where I got my wool pressing mat. Um, so do your stuff when this, she's donating a $75 gift certificate, which is super generous. So you can get your own little pressing mat like this from Sewing by Sarah. So anyway, I've got my pressing mat. You can take it over to the ironing board. And we're just, let me give you a better view of this. You're just opening, opening it up with my fingers. I'm pressing the seam is this going this way. If you're a press opener, you can press them open. I'm not, I like to kind of, when I press, I like to kind of nudge the seam open with the side of my iron and then just hold it, okay? So I got a nice seam pressed there. And the next step, and you'll repeat that, do it for all of your things. And then we'll are ready to sew the other side. Um, this time the line goes this way because we want to make that flying geese shape. I'm gonna pin it, and then I'll sew it, starting here, going towards the corner. So let me do that real quick. sewn on the line and now I am going to trim it off either with scissors or rotary keep that to make some half square triangles out of press and just press it open press it to the side here and we're good to go just repeat that a bunch of times. Um, so we've got that. And you'll do that. We'll talk about how to join them all together once I'm done showing the all-in-one method for how to do that. So, um, so fast forward if you need to. All right, all-in-one method. You, I mean, no waste method, you have one large square and we're working with four of the background squares that we have marked. And we're going to make four flying geese out of this whole thing. So what I've done is I put two squares on my, um, on my fabric my flying geese fabric. The line goes from corner all the way through here to corner. And I'm just gonna pin this. They over, you'll notice that they overlap in the middle. That's normal, that's what they're supposed to do. So I like to pin, especially with the larger ones, kind of pin at both sides. And then I'll actually put a pin here in the middle to, help it stay nice. All right, so pinned, let's talk about sewing. We're going to sew, instead of sewing on the line, we're going to sew a quarter inch on boat, on either side of the line. Um, I'm gonna be using my quarter inch foot. Um, with a quarter inch foot, you'll basically be keeping the edge of the foot on the line and then You'll be stitching a quarter inch away from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, again, I'm sorry, I don't know how to edit. We will just, we will just, just fast forward if you need. Um, I will be over here sewing. Maybe I'll think of something interesting to say while I do it. Um, so we are, let's see if we can get a, yeah, I can't really get a good view of that. No, all right, just hang with me. So, sewing along here, 
one quarter inch on either side. When I get down to the middle, just make sure, you know, the flap, one side doesn't flap up. So I've gone down one side. Now I'm just gonna flip it and sew. Just a second. Sew down the other side with the edge of my foot on the line so that the stitches are a quarter inch away from the line. Okie dokie. And done. So, I've stitched on both sides of the line. Again, where did I put my scissors? Okay. You can either use your rotary cutter, just put the ruler on the line and rotary cut it. I like to use scissors. It doesn't matter, I'm cutting on the line this time. And all of this is in the instructions. This is just, this is just extra for you if you like to kind of see how, see how things work. You can do it in real time with me. Push pause you need. Okay, so I've got these two weird things. This is when I first learned about this method, this always just kind of, just a second, this always kind of blew my mind that this even worked. It seems bizarre. All right, so back down to my pressing mat. I've got, I'm just going to be pressing these up. Again, you can, if you're a press opener, you can press open. I am not a press opener. So, and again, I like to put the, I like to kind of use my fingers to get that open, but then take the side of my iron, make sure that seems pressed open, do the other side and press. And then just repeat with my other side. Press them open with my fingers. Press one side, move over, press the other side. So now we've got these kind of heart-shaped, heart-shaped things. And this is gonna turn into flying geese. It's amazing. So let me see, here we go. So I take one of my other, um, my other squares and I'm putting it on top of, just a second, there we go, on the remaining corner with the line going from this tip through to the middle. And this is, it's gonna poke out and overlap. That's fine, that's normal. Um, and then we're just gonna sew again on either side of the line. You know what, I'm gonna be, set a good example. What I what's the most efficient way to do it is to, again, do all this at once where I'm sewing a whole bunch of these and then trimming a whole bunch and then pinning a whole bunch. So I've got both of these pinned and ready to go. Now I'm going to take it over here to the sewing machine and so I'm going to start at the bottom. My machine tends to like that. I don't know. Machines are fussy. Um, if everything's gone right, just a second, let me show you on this. If everything's gone right, your needle should actually hit at this little notch right there when you start sewing. So it's a little bit off. That's okay. It'll turn out fine. So I'm sewing and then I like to just flip it over and then start from the other point. And since I'm starting, actually my machine's fine. When I'm starting a little bit to the side of the um, point, my machine doesn't tend to eat it. So. Here I've sewn both sides. In order to make the block, I need to do all of them. So 
I apologize for making you watch me sew this, but that's just kind of how we're doing it today. All right, so one side, flip the whole, I'm just rotating the whole block and then sewing down the other side. Oh shoot, my needle came unthreaded. Now you guys get to watch me re-thread the, thread the needle. What could possibly go wrong? All right, let's see. Okay, dokey, first try. All right, good, yay. All right, so sewing that second side up. on both sides of this one sewed on both sides of the line on that one quarter inch away and now again you can use your rotary cutter or scissors and just cut on the marked line and then we are going to have um, four flying geese when I first learned about this method, it didn't really have a name. So I called it, well, I mean, it probably did, but I hadn't heard it and it wasn't like super common, but I called it the magic method because I think it's kind of magic. Like you go from the all these weird shapes and then, and keep sewing and cutting and then voila, you have four flying geese all at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just going to press these real quick um, again pressing this is an awkward setup all right okay press all four of these press it open with my hand go to the side give it a press um, some people are really big on like not moving the iron at all. I think you can kind of like move the iron some, like kind of moving it, pressing. But what you want to avoid is really like, because that can, that can distort. I mean, it didn't right there. But if you really go at it, you can make your fabric warp or distort, and that's not great. Also, another tip, I forgot about this. You should do this is to, before you press the seam open, is to set it, which means, it basically means just ironing it um, with the, the fabric right sides together and then push it open and then iron it. One of the great things about these wool mats is that they kind of hold some heat. So you're, so after you've been pressing for a bit, the fabric is actually getting heat from the bottom and the top. So plus it's just handy. All right, so I've got four flying geese. What we're gonna wanna do real quick is trim off these little dog ears. I mean, you don't have to have to, but I don't know that I said to do it in the pattern, but I don't know, it just keeps everything nice and neat and the um, seam allowances nice and neat so all right this next part of the pattern is the same for whether you are using the stitch and flip method or the no waste method so stitch and flippers jump back in and we'll finish making the rest of the block together grab these guys up okay so we've got our four flying geese the basic method of construction is going to be the same for all the blocks in all the different sizes we're sewing them together into a column so you can lay them out if you're using the scrappy method where you have um, where you have um, different fabrics you know lay them out if there's a color gradient you want to do or if you want to alternate colors do that figure 
how what you want to do. If you're using the ombre method and you're using ombre fabric, um, what you've done, you have your square of ombre, which is gonna be darker on one side and lighter on the other side. We've essentially cut it into quarters. So you're gonna have one of your flying geese is gonna be slightly darker. One of them is gonna be slightly lighter. And two of them are gonna be a little bit light on one side, light on one side and dark on the other side. So what I would do is at the base of your flying geese stack, I would take that flying goose that was from the bottom of the ombre fabric, the darker part, and put that one here. And then take the flying goose that was from the top part, the lighter part, and put it at the very, at the very top here. And then the two from the sides, I'd put them in the middle and it doesn't matter which direction they go. So that way you kind of get that ombre thing. So it acts, you don't want to accidentally have it be dark at the top and then dark light at the bottom. Anyway, just pay attention to it so that you go from darker at the bottom to lighter at the top. Okay, so we're just gonna sew these together into a column. One trick about sewing flying geese is we want we want these points to be we want these points to not get cut off. We want them to look good. We want one flying goose to just just butt right up against the neck, the bottom of the next one. So what's one way to do this is to just I'm gonna pin this really quick. Pin these together. Um, I want you to take a look at the back side. If you, it's hard to see here, but we've got a seam going up here and we've got a seam going this way and they cross in the middle. And that cross is where the top of our flying goose is. So when I am sewing these two pieces together along this side, if I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam and I've done everything perfectly, I should sew right over that cross. Sometimes things are not perfect. So if something, if you're a little bit off, but can make a little bit of a, just kind of go a hair one way or the other to catch that X and to sew right over that X, that's good. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to sew all of these together and I'm going to do that as quick as I can and try to talk about something interesting while I sew. So come on over here and I am feeling, oh look, there you can kind of see there it is. I am feeling a lot more motivated to make more videos. So, okay. I'm starting here. You don't need to, when you're quilting, you don't really need to backstitch. Um, I do like reducing the length of my stitches so things don't come a, apart. Um, I think a two is kind of standard. Um, I like to go even smaller and do a 1.8. Anyway, just so you know. Okay, so I'm sewing. Sewing up one side. I'm almost, I'm getting to that center, so I'm just gonna kind of slow down a little bit and kind of make sure that I catch it. The thread is actually a little hard to see on this, so we'll see. Let's see how well I did. Okay. Um, so let's see. Oh, pretty good. Looking good. All right, so I'm just gonna keep adding on. I'm gonna sew the next one on. I put them right sides together. Points all, points touching the base. Um, and sewing on this side so I can see my, see my cross. But anyway, making these videos is kind of fun, kind of terrifying because like your machine can start to act up and come unthreaded again. And then you have to like thread your machine on camera and waste people's time with it because you don't know how to edit film yet. But I am more interested in getting to do that type of thing. Let's see if I can get it. All right. 
um, when I first bought my machine, the people who sold it to me were really like big on saying like, oh, it has an automatic like threader. And I was like, I don't need that. I can thread my machine just fine. And now, <laughs> now like five years later, actually more than that, how long has it been? Six, seven years later, my eyesight isn't quite what it was. And now I'm like, oh, yay. Now I don't have to run upstairs to get my reading glasses so that I can thread my machine. So now I have a lot more empathy. Um, so, you know, if you're young, don't discount that thread, that thread threader look pretty good. All right, adding the last one on. Um, and then we're going to go these. I'm not pinning because um, I feel pretty good about this. The sizes are all the same. And there's nothing I really need to match up. And, you know, I've sewn a few quilts before, so, but Definitely pin if you feel at all nervous about it. Okay. My thread cutter's coming. Okay. So, we've got our whole line of flying geese. These are the four and a half by eight and a half flying geese. So, I've still got to sew a strip to either side, and I'll show you how to do that. If these were the larger size, the five and a half by ten and a half inch flying geese, we'd be done. We just need to press and you're done and repeat for however many rows you're doing. Um, the small throw has five, so you'd make five of these. And the um, large throw, almost twin size, but not quite, has um, eight. So you'd repeat this and do eight. But these are the four and a half by eight inch ones. So we're gonna need to, um, we're gonna need to add a strip to each side, but before I do that, I need to press. So, just pressing this. Um, the seams are gonna go away from the points. So, this would be a good time to set your seams and then press, but I kinda, I feel like this video is getting long. So, we're gonna just skip that and just let me press this. And yeah, I'm feeling more and more motivated to learn how to edit. So, so that you guys don't have to watch me do this. Okay, so pressed. And I'm going to, in the pattern, it tells you what size strips you need to sew onto either side. And I'm gonna find mine They're right there. They are not right over here. Let me see. They are. Hey. Okay, this is super embarrassing. Oh, they're right here. They're underneath my pattern. Okay, <clears throat> fun times. So I've uh, got my thin strips and these are super skinny little guys. And the point of these strips is we just want all of our flying geese that are different sizes to fit together into a column at the end. So I'm going to just sew a strip on either side. So this is the deal. If all things went well and you sewed your blocks together perfectly and and you made your flying geese perfectly and all seams are right, these should fit perfectly. It should be should be perfect and if you've cut everything perfectly. If they are not and um they're a little bit long, it's probably gonna be the problem. If they're a little bit long, don't worry about it. I mean, 
worry about it in the, hmm, I've got some room for improvement, but don't worry about it because the quilt's gonna come together. Just sew them on and then um, you can just trim off the edges, it's okay. Especially if all of your columns of flying geese are the same shortness, it's gonna be okay. And at the, at the very top, where the smallest geese are, there is a small, there's a two and a half inch sashing strip. So if things get a little, there's, there's a little bit of wiggle room for things to fit together and to just kind of trim things even if you need to. I mean, do your best, but it's gonna be okay, all right? Okay, enough said, we're good. So I'm, I don't think you guys really need to see me sew these to either side. I'm just pinning and then sewing and then I will set my seam. This is setting seams is actually kind of important for this part because with when you have a very long seam it just helps everything open up better. So I will set my seam and then press it. Boom. Um, and then I'll just repeat this for all of my blocks. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, uh, just to recap, we're going to be making, if you're making the throw size or the large throw size, you'll be making two sets of geese, the ones that are five inches tall and the ones that are four inches tall. The ones that four are four inches tall, you'll need to sew the strips to the side. And the ones that are five inches tall, just sew them into a column. And repeat that for as many columns as you need. Um, either four or, I mean, either five or eight, depending whether you're doing the small or large throw. If you're making the crib size, you don't need to make the five inch tall ones. You'll just be making the four inch tall flying geese, sewing them into a column and sewing the sides on, repeating for, for making four sets of those. Um, I think this is good. I'd love to see what you make. If you posted the picture on Instagram with the hashtag hello geese quilt along, um, you'll be entered to win the prize from our sponsor, um, Sewing by Sarah, which is a $75 gift card. It needs to be posted by next Thursday evening is when I'll do the thing so I can let you know Friday. Um, who won? It's, that's in March sometime. I don't know the date off the top of my head. Next Thursday. Um, and all those details will have been in the email that you will have gotten. And I just hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have fun sewing. Um, by the end of this, you are going to be an expert at flying geese. And um, I can't see, wait to see all these quilts come together. I've seen so many beautiful um, fabric pool, pool, pulls that we're just gonna have a bunch of amazing quilts at the end of this. And I'm so excited that you've joined me on this. I am thank you for your patience with my um, filmmaking. And um, have a wonderful, week and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye.